Hey, welcome back to EMS Abounds, uh, the textbook chapters, uh, chapter 34 in the EMT book on geriatrics. So this one's kind of cut and dry. There's not a lot of excitement to it, but it's pretty important because our geriatric population is probably our largest population in EMS as far as transport goes. Um, <clears throat> my daughter is 31 this year and my oldest son is now 30, just turned 30. And so I was giving him grief about this first line. You know, after the age of 30, uh, systems lose about 1% uh, function each year. That's an average. Some people who abuse their bodies with drugs and alcohol, for example, uh, or just hard living otherwise, it very well may be more. And those that take care of themselves, it may be less. So this is an average. Their maximum heart rate declines. So that's not that their heart won't beat faster. It just means that in compensating for things, it can't beat as fast. <laughs> Excuse me, so they're gonna have a little harder time uh, compensating. <clears throat> their fact of a lot of them have internal bleeding issues um, and their heart rate won't climb, right? We miss it. So why won't their heart rate climb? Well, besides the fact that just the heart isn't functioning as well, a lot of these folks are on medications that limit uh, the heart rate. So uh, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, for example. And so they're not going to compensate well. And <clears throat> we're not, you know, they, they present as weak they present as a little bit of shortness of breath with exertion. And we don't really see any reason for that. Well, they've been slowly bleeding in their GI tract for a few days to a week or whatever. And they're, uh, so you don't really see the fact that they're becoming shocky if you don't keep your eyes open and your index of suspicion high. <clears throat> communicating with them, right? Uh, we've all dealt with older people who have trouble with their hearing, um, vision, memory, uh, their dentition, their teeth, right? As far as chewing, eating, talking without teeth. Uh, a lot of times it's hard to understand them. They've had other strokes or they've had strokes. They've got residual uh, effects from strokes uh, and they might have some dementia. Now, <clears throat> just because they're old, and they're confused, do not assume that is normal for them, okay? Assume that any form of um, altered mental status is new, okay? Unless proven otherwise. If the guy's wife is standing right there and says, no, 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 this is his norm, he had a stroke two years ago, or he's got advanced dementia, or, you know, okay, well, is there something different about his mental status now, okay? So, <clears throat> um, one of the problems is that people, and when I say people, EMS, nursing, physicians, they look at the patient's family and ask them the questions because they're old and they assume they're not gonna know. And it's super insulting, okay? So ask the patients first. Um, this guy is doing a great job in my mind. I mean, he's looking at her, he's down on her level, he's not towering over her, intimidating her. He's checking a pulse, which is also telling him his, her skin um, temperature and, and condition. And he's got a hand on her shoulder. He, it's just a reassuring touch, right? The laying on of hands. People like that, okay? It makes them feel better. <clears throat> so look around, scene size up, right? I say this all the time. What do I see, hear, and smell? So as I'm walking up to the house, does it look like it's a rat hole? Uh, has the grass not been mowed in a year? Uh, is there trash on the porch? Um, are there holes in the, in the steps, all right? So safety for us, but also how are they doing it caring for themselves? Or how are they doing it having somebody else care for them? <clears throat> Food, as you age, sense of taste and sense of smell, which of course right now, oh my God, it's, co it's the Rona right, COVID um, symptoms, but they lose sense of taste and smell. And if food 
doesn't smell good, it doesn't taste good. And if it doesn't taste good, people are less likely to eat it. So you see sandwiches lying around, you know. Um, I was asked, hey, is it, how come you didn't eat today? That looks like a great sandwich. Oh, I just, I never have any appetite. I, you know, I only eat about half a sandwich at lunch, okay? Um, clean, dirty, and then be an advocate for these patients, right? When I'm going to look for a medication list, um, or they say, oh, my medicines are in the medicine cabinet in the bathroom, I'm looking around. I'm looking for throw rugs, those little circular or rectangular rugs that people love to put out because they're trip hazards, okay? Um, I look in the bathroom for grab handles to help them get in and out of the tub or shower. Um, grab handles to sit down or stand up on the toilet, uh, same next to their bed. And I will talk to them or their family members about those things that I see. I go, hey, you know, I'm, as I was looking for your medicine, I happen to notice all these things. And, I, you know, if you fall, you, you trip on that rug, you could break a hip. Oh, I don't want to break a hip. Um, my neighbor, Martha, broke her hip, and she died, right? She never came home, okay? So they just, they don't know these things. So being an advocate for them and looking around. <clears throat> From the door, what's my general impression? You know, do they look good or do they look like shit? Because that's the way my brain processes it. Hey, he looks pretty good. Ooh, he looks like shit. And if they look pretty good, I'm going to go over, I'm going to, you know, introduce myself. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to talk to them while I do my assessment. If they look like caca, uh, I'm going to move faster, right? I'm not going to kind of take my time. I'm still going to introduce myself because I'm going to, you know, I walk up to everybody and go, hey, my name's Kevin. I'm one of the medics. I stick my hand out to shake their hand. At the same time they do that, I take their wrist with my other hand and I'm checking their pulse. I'm checking their skin for turgor, right? Are, do they have skin tinting? Are they dehydrated? Um, are they warm to the touch, cool to the touch? Are they diaphoretic? Are they dry, right? And I'm looking at skin. Is it pink? Is it pale? Is it cyanotic? Jaundiced, okay? <clears throat> and I'm asking them, what do you like to be called? My name's Joe. Okay, Joe, what's going on today? Right? Well, I haven't felt good for a couple of days. Boom, I have done ABCs and mental status in five seconds. I know that skin is pink, warm, dry. Turger's good. His airway's open. He's speaking full sentences to me without the stress, and he's telling me who he is and what the problem is. Oh, all right. I can sit down and take my time with this dude. Um, uh, I'm having chest pain. I'm having, okay, well, you know, we need to do EKGs, and, you know, but I don't have to pick him up and yard him out to the stretcher because he's dying. From the door, she looks fine, right? Skin's pink, she's attentive, looks like she's thinking about something. Now, granted, we don't know enough now to say whether she's just staring off into space, but from the door, she looks pretty good. As I said before, the, a huge portion of our population, this one says twice as many, uh, older people use PMS and younger, <laughs> right? They fall, they break things. They um, <clears throat> don't have a way to get to the hospital. They, um, any number of reasons. So, radio pulse, same thing as with anybody else. Um, when I do that radio pulse, when I stick my hand out and shake their hand and I'm checking a radio, I'm not counting at that point. I'll do the count when I'm getting full set of vital signs. Um, I look at that first five seconds as um, Goldilocks and the three bears, right? Ooh, too slow, too fast, just right. That's all I want. Right. Secondary assessment. <clears throat> Get a full history. I cannot tell you how many intercepts I've been where I walk in and, uh, or I, I step into their truck and they can't tell me their history. Uh, well, what medicines are they on? Do you have a med list? Uh, oh, no, we didn't have time. Why? She's alert, oriented, and talking to you. She's got a broken wrist. You know, why didn't you do this? Um, well, she says it's at the hospital. It might be. It might not be. We might be going to a different hospital, okay? So full history. Um, are they compliant with their meds? In other words, are they taking them the way they're supposed to? You got to remember that some of the older folks who are on limited incomes can't afford their medicines the way they're supposed to take them. 
So they'll skip days or they'll cut them in half, okay? Or they'll run out and they won't take them for a while, okay? Ask family, um, get a list of medicines at the house. I prefer a list. If I cannot get a list, I will take the medicines with me. Like we don't have time, you know, patients crumping and we gotta go. I'll just take the drugs with me um, in a Walmart bag or whatever. I don't want to take them though because there's more risk for them to get lost. Do your physical exam, right? Do they need a rapid trauma exam? Are they unconscious? Do they need a rapid trauma exam? Or do they have an isolated injury and we're going to do a focused exam? Get your baseline vitals in the house. Um, I have this argument with people all the time. Well, we're going to wait till we get to the truck. No, we're not. I'm going to do them right now, right? Baseline vitals. If I know now in the house that it's 120 over 80, Pulse is 72, respirations are 12, SATs are 97. When I get to the truck 10 minutes from now, because it's gonna take us at least 10 minutes to get them on the stair chair, under a stretcher, into the ambulance, get the vitals done, 10 to 15 minutes. If now I'm at 110 over 70 and 96 and 18 for respirations, well, those are all stable vital signs, but they show me we're trending in a bad direction. Get your gut. Get the damn bottles in the house. Okay, do your job. It's another one of my playlists. <clears throat> um, physical exam, all right, head to toe if you need to. Um, focused exam, they got a, an ankle injury, I go from the hip down. They got a knee injury, the hip down. They got a knee, uh, okay, neck down. Um, anything, any complaint with the chest or the belly, I do chest and belly, okay? They go together like peas and carrots. Um, Pelvis and extremities, so hip hip fractures are a proximal femur fracture up in the, usually the femoral neck um, and very commonly fractured. They have weaker bones, especially the little, sweet little old lady, right? Who hasn't, she's osteoporosis, right? She's got weak bones, okay? So, um, Oh, this is an awful picture, right? Oh, we're gonna take grandma and um, we're gonna put a collar on her and then we're gonna sit her back into a kedboard and we're gonna strap her in an uncomfortable position with a mask strapped to her face. Um, and uh, it's crap, right? She looks good. She's pink, warm, dry. I don't know about dry, but she's not obviously diaphoretic, right? Her shirt's not soaked. Um, and she's grabbing at the collar. Yeah, this looks this looks comfortable. So. Again, maybe national standards, you have to do this, uh, but certainly not where those states that have adopted spinal motion restrictions, thank God. I think it's funny. They show this picture of shingles in a geriatric um, program on a young guy. Yeah, anyway, so shingles. Um, uh, virus uh, based on the chicken pox, right? Varicella virus and it follows a nerve. So it, it, this little spore sits at the root of the nerve for five, 10, 20, 40, 50 years. And when you get sick with something else, you are emotionally stressed because of a life change, um, et cetera, right? This spore goes, aha, and attacks and follows that nerve. Um, this is a very typical shingles rash but shingles rashes are late sign. The pain that follows that rib, you're gonna get that first, okay? And then you, you'll get a little bit of redness and then eventually, and this is highly contagious by the way. It can be anywhere, but you can see this does not go all the way across the chest because that nerve, let's say that is the fifth intercostal space. And the reason I say that without feeling the ribs is that where breast tissue meets the rib cage doesn't matter whether you're male or female. Um, where that you can just you can kind of see where there's a little bit of rise. That's breast tissue. Um, that is the fifth intercostal space. It doesn't matter whether you're this dude or Dolly Parton, okay, or Kim Kardashian or whoever you happen to know nowadays. Where that fold occurs or that rise, that's the fifth intercostal. The fifth intercostal rib, uh, fifth intercostal nerve. <clears throat> All right, so pelvis and extremities, we want to look for edema and swelling in the extremities, absolutely. Um, you can look for sacral edema if you want. Uh, not me, not ever. Um, right, sacrum, 
the backside of your pelvis. Um, if you think I'm going to look at uh, somebody and go, excuse me, ma'am, is your ass always this big? No, not in this lifetime, okay? Anyways, so absolutely though, I look at the legs, I look at the ankles uh, for swelling um, because they do have, um, they are uh, uh, symptomatic for things to do with the heart, the liver, uh, blood vessels, okay? Spine, um, very common in motor vehicle collisions. Remember the uh, cervical spine um, is the weakest spot in the spine. And on top of it sits about a 20 pound bowling ball, okay? And they already have weak bones, right? So um, abnormal curvature, this is one of the big reasons like, you know, we made these people worse collaring and boarding them. Um, keep them in their normal position. Okay, if they're hunched up, they're kind of like a hunch back and their neck and, and jaw kind of jut forward, then if you're going to put them on your stretcher, you need to support them in that position. <clears throat> More commonly, adults show this very slow, steady decline. Um, so you gotta have that baseline set of vitals, okay? Um, 15 minutes for a stable patient is great every 15. If you're not like, 100% positive, do them every five, right? Um, always start with your, your mental status uh, and then go back to your ABCs whenever you reassess them. And if something changes, this was any patient, but if anything changes immediately, go back to your primary survey, start all over again. Um, breathing pulse, right? Skin color, temp moisture, five, five to 15. Oh, and check what you've been doing and are the treatments working? Um, you know, Talk to your patients. Uh, we have gotten very bad at this. We sit behind the patient because I got, I got to do some paperwork and you sit behind the patient. You're doing an hour and a half transfer and you want to sit behind the patient and, you know, Facebook on your phone, whatever. Okay. But um, you had a short transport and especially any sort of a 911 call you have to sit next to them. You have to keep assessing them. Okay, you've got that transfer who's going for rehab after a broken, uh, you know, broken hip. And again, it's an hour and a half transfer and they want to sleep. Yeah, okay, cool, I got that. But you're picking her up with the hip. Sit there and talk to her. <clears throat> so commonly seen when assessing uh, blood pressures, um, they uh, kind of, as we age, our blood pressures tend to climb. Um, Hopefully we get put on medicines, they go back to normal. And then as we get into the very kind of elderly years, blood pressures tend to start to drop off again, okay? Hips, most common. Um, challenges, right? Talking to them, hearing them. Um, vague signs and symptoms taking care of a lot of hip fractures where it doesn't really hurt unless you move the leg, right? Because their ability to feel pain diminishes. Medications, again, we, we talked about money. Um, it's hard to justify buying $400 worth of a medicine when you need to buy food, okay? So um, medications have adverse reactions also. And the other thing you have to think about nowadays is what's called polypharmacy. Now, polypharmacy means that um, this two drugs that I'm on are on the Walmart $4 list. So I get those at Walmart. I get these three from the mail order and I get these four from the Walgreens because they're the cheapest. And so we've got three different pharmacies dealing out medications for a patient and they don't know what the other ones are. So they may be giving you drugs that have overlapping side effects. In the old days, you always went to Joe's Pharmacy downtown Rochester because that's the only place. And he knew you. Like, oh, Kevin, how you doing? Right? Oh, hey, you know, this medicine here. Okay. So we see this a lot. Um, liver and kidneys don't work as well. So they're, the medications tend to stay in the body longer. So as we continue to pile them up, the levels pile up, okay? Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, drugs interact together. Uh, 
this is a disaster waiting to happen. We've got medications in a drawer. We've got them on a table. We've got um, old elixir bottles. Um, we've got um, inhaled meds. We've got pills. We've got eye drops. Eye drops. Oh, that's great. So maybe they have a little trouble reading what medicines they're supposed to take. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. So what, as an advocate of what you do, is you talk to them about these pill containers that you can get at Walmart for, you know, three bucks. And they say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, morning, lunch, dinner on them. And you try to get them to set their medicines up and have somebody help set them up. It makes it safer for them. Uh, some common things, right? Shortness of breath can be emphysema, um, can be asthma, uh, certainly congestive heart failure or um, uh, PEs, um, and also cardiac issues, right? You're having um, uh, NMI, your only symptom might be shortness of breath, right? So pretty much anything, I mean, if, if, if you've ever heard Bob Page talk about EKGs, he talks about from the knees to the nose, okay? Anything in between, do a 12 lead. Mm, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm more of a torso guy, but, uh, you know, anything belly chest, um, I certainly uh, do EKGs on all of them. Uh, and also neuro, neuro, you know, anything in the head, because so I go above the nose. I don't do airway like stuff, but um, anything neurologically, I do uh, EKGs. Okay. Now, right what causes chest pains um you know, your cardiac chapters well you get the angina right you're having an mi which could be st elevation mi or an n STEMI, non st elevation mi um which can only be picked up with blood work you could have pneumonia that'll give you chest pain it's a very common cause of chest pain and you certainly have an aneurysm alter mental status you know and these are all differential diagnoses right could be the meserum Check a blood sugar. Any altered mental status, always check a blood sugar. All right. We had one the other day. Uh, I don't feel good. Haven't felt good since Christmas. Um, I've got a non-productive cough. She looked all the, you know, room air stats are 80. She looked all the world like a pneumonia. And we did a blood sugar and it was high. Well, it turns out it was 900 high. Um, and she's got altered mental status and she doesn't feel good and she had crappy sets. So we do a 12 lead. And she's having a big STEMI too. Okay, so keep in mind those things. Um, stroke, do a stroke exam. Um, sepsis, um, you know, do they have a source of infection and do they have two of the three signs of SIRS, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, right? Pulse above 90, respiratory rate above 20, and a temperature below 96.8 or above 100.6. If they have two of those and a source of an infection, they're septic, okay? Um, hypothermia, pneumonias. Elderly females, the number one, this is worth your money for admission alone. The number one cause of altered mental status in elderly females is urinary tract infection. <clears throat> um, belly pain and bleeding, certainly aneurysms. Uh, bowel obstructions are very common in elderly females who are a little overweight. Diverticulosis is a pouching and out pouching within the uh, um, intestinal tract. And usually what happens, they get something stuck in there. A lot of times it's seeds and nuts. Okay. And it becomes diverticulitis, which is an inflammation of that. Um, and it gets infected and it's very painful. And okay. Uh, internal bleeding. They can have a very, very, very tiny ulcer they don't even know about. Um, and over the course of several weeks or a month, they become anemic. Cancers, ulcers, medications. Dizzy, weak malaise. So malaise is this feeling of just blah, run down, weak, tired, sleep all the time. These are not normal presentations. Something is going on, okay? Um, Please be aware and take it seriously. 12 leads, right? Okay. Um, depression and suicide. The most successful suicide is the elderly male. Why? Well, for a number of reasons. <clears throat> One, um, there's no vanity there, right? You have a female, and I know this sounds sexist, but it's proven to be true. 
females, regardless of age, um, worry about how am I going to look, you know, um, open coffin. They've pulled the dress that they want to be, you know, buried in, that their friends are going to see them in. Um, you know, the old 70 year old guy who's lost everyone, right? He's alone. His wife's, you know, dead. Um, maybe one of his kids are dead. He's got nobody left. He doesn't care. He does not give a rat's ass. And um, most of the most males by that point in their lifetime have some form of um, exposure and or comfortable um, uh, being around firearms. And they, you know, suck start at 45 and they shoot themselves. Um, so they're the most successful. Um, so they've lost friends. They've lost their houses. Um, they, their, their um, uh, chemicals, right? Their electrolytes, their whatever, are completely off. Um, shingles, herpes, a little odd that this comes up again after that picture, but, uh, you know, 10 minutes later, but years and years and years. Um, typically ribs, but it can be any place. Um, there's a picture in one of these slideshows that shows it up. Uh, it follows the nerve track over the top of his head down by his eye. Looks awful. Um, this pain can last up to a year. We see a lot of these folks end up hooked on pain meds. Um, you know, they're taking Percocet or Vicodin or Tramadol or whatever, Ultram, because the pain, it just, it hurts like hell. Okay. Now, if you come in contact with the fluid, like I said, it is very contagious. Balls, they bruise your ribs. It hurts to take a deep breath. It hurts to cough, so they don't, and they develop pneumonias. Okay. Um, however, why did they fall? Right. You got to ask. Don't assume they tripped. Ma'am, what, what happened? Did you? So, like, you'll hear the ER, for example, the other day, they asked my partner, was this a mechanical fall? In other words, did they trip and fall? Did they miss a step, right? Um, versus, um, no, we got dizzy and fell, uh, lost his balance and fell, right? Because that could be heart going too fast, too slow. Um, stroke, anemic, right? Just stood up and blood pressure dropped and they dropped. Okay, so why did they fall and did they hurt themselves when they fell? Neglect and abuse um, can be physical, psychological, financial. So you can abuse them this way or they can be neglected this way. Um, and a lot of times it is absolutely difficult to detect and we do have requirements. In the state of New Hampshire, you, it is a law that you have to report anything, abuse and neglect, the age of 60 and above, as well as kids. Now, um, you know, you've got this couple who've been together for 50 years and now one of them gets sick. It can be very difficult to take care of that person. Um, and it can be frustrating. And some of this um, will lead to a neglect or abuse, okay? So, um, and unfortunately, people don't always have help. Okay, so again, if you happen to kind of notice this, be an advocate. There's a picture of the shingles I was telling you down into his eyes. Uh, loss of independence uh, is a sucky thing. They um, need help to do things. They can't drive. My mother-in-law, we're going through this with her now. She's 88 years old. Um, her memory has gotten bad. Um, kind of short-term memory. Long-term, you know, pretty good. Um, but she still wants to drive to her appointments. She still wants to drive to her uh, to the store to do her own shopping um, because she's been, she worked until a year or two ago selling it. She was an insurance agent, you know, and she loved it. And she, she they live in Ohio and she's driving to Cincinnati alone and, you know, see customers and clients and, and now suddenly she can't, she's not doing real well with that, but, um, so do all these things for them. Okay. Take the time, ask them if you want them, if you want to, her to lock up the house for them. Okay. Um, some of these folks will, you know, no, I'm not going to the hospital. Uh, well, you have to go. How about you go about it this way? Um, uh, ma'am, how come you don't want to go? Well, who's going to take care of my dog? Uh, tell you what, let me, 
when's he, when's he normally eat? Let me feed your dog. Let me let your dog out, right? Um, can, is there a neighbor we can call? Is there a family member we can call? Okay. Um, these pets might be the only family they have. And they'll die instead of go to the hospital. All right. So pets are a big deal. Empathize and reassure them. Aging um, impacts different patients in different ways and different body systems in different ways. We need to be able to adapt for this and we need to be able to understand what it is that we're seeing. Right? Um, meds, we need to know what they're taking, how often they're taking them, are they compliant with them? And um, you know, you might have two bottles of the same medicine, find out if they're taking meds from both bottles because maybe they're accidentally overdosing themselves okay um elder abuse is a big deal um be suspicious don't be confrontational but be suspicious of it okay so you get called to a nursing facility for an 85 year old female who's having trouble breathing is very confused what could be wrong what are you going to do for her well we're going to do an assessment we're going to do our abcs um as far as her trouble breathing goes is her airway open um, how are her lung sounds? Do I have JVD, right? What are, what's her pulse oximeter, right? Does she need a little bit of oxygen with a cannula? Does she need a lot of oxygen with a non-rebreather? Or do we need to ventilate her, right? So with this patient, I would say uh, she's probably got pneumonia, right? She's having trouble breathing and she's confused. Um, very common. Um, she also could have a UTI and a pneumonia, right? So um keep in mind the different things that you might be looking at okay so that is um chapter 34 which is geriatric emergencies um appreciate you spending some time with me today and uh it is new year's day 2022 i wish you the best in the new year